name is Dalen Hargrave. It's my rare privilege to demonstrate the OMF machine by Polymetric. And I've just received in the mail a digital scintillator number 88. And we're going to hook this up to the OMF machine and show you a little bit about concave fastening. Okay, now that we got the machine set up, following this simple little 12 step program, we're gonna go ahead and cut a gemstone. The OMF machine comes with the splash guard. It's just a PVC fitting that slides over. You take this off, it helps assist in changing the mandrels. And I'm going to put a little piece of sponge underneath the mandrel. This catches a little bit of water from the water drip and helps distribute the water evenly. I'm going to place the flexible water drip system that I've rigged up for my own machine to drip slightly on the mandrel. It doesn't take a lot of water, just a steady drip. Now I'm going to go ahead and saturate the sponge to get us off to a little better start. I've positioned the dop arm stops so that when I bring the stone around <clears throat> I can push the dop up against this stop. We always want to push it up against the stop before coming down onto the mandrel. Now I've got this set at 45 degrees. What I'm going to do is gradually lower the machine so that it starts cutting. This mandrel actually can go counterclockwise or clockwise and for this we're actually turning counterclockwise. This is rotating around this direction which will be applying a little bit of pressure pushing the dop into the stop so that we're always pushed into it. As an option you can reverse the direction. The advantage to that being if you accidentally catch the stone in a dop, uh, in a uh, mandrel, a soft mandrel, then it'll fling the stone away and you might not knock the stone off of the, the dop. But for this we're turning in a counterclockwise motion. I'm going to hold it up against the stop and gradually lower the machine till we start cutting. The OMF machine has an oscillating motion that goes in and out. I'm going to bring that up and inspect it periodically. We need to lower the cut just a bit. Bring it up against the stops and then cut. I'm applying just ever so slight a pressure, waiting for the machine, the scintillator's digital to come right up to the 45 degree angle. You can hear the cutting action has slowed down. I finished the cut on that facet. Now I'm going to go on to the next facet. We're going to be putting eight facets around this first tier. Started at 96. Now we've gone all the way around the first tier. Now that we've made the first cut, 
I'm going to change mandrels. Want to lock the shaft in place. This was a 600 grit mandrel, uh, 13 millimeters in diameter. You can get these mandrels in several different diameter sizes from 13 all the way up to 21 millimeters and Corian too. Place the splash shield. This particular mandrel is a 3000 grit bat mandrel that you charge with diamond compound. The way you charge a bat mandrel is turn the machine on, just spray it with a quick burst of WD 40, wipe off the excess. Turn the machine off, and with your fingertip, you can dust it. Every so often with some diamond compound, diamond dust, and turn the machine on. Distribute that evenly. Then I have a special sponge dedicated for this 3000 grit that will help keep the mandrel charged. You can remove the water source because we're going to do this one dry. And now we just repeat the process. We'll lower the machine until it contacts the mandrel. Change the index setting. Slowly work your way around all eight facets on the pavilion of this stone. This is a piece of Dust Devil Sunstone. Occasionally the mandrel will get just a little bit dry and give it just a quick burst of WD-40 as a lubricant. Now that we've completed that tier with a pre-polish and final sand of 3000 grit, we're going to change out the mandrel, remove the splash guard, make it a little easier. Roll this around until you lock the mandrel in place. An important part of this step is make sure everything is clean because this is going to be our final polish available in Corian as well which is a very fine polishing lap make sure you, you clean everything well uh, this is a Corian mandrel made by Roy Wickman replace the splash guard what I'm gonna do is put a sponge underneath the mandrel and we're going to use cerium oxide and spray just a little bit of water to dampen the sponge. Turn the mandrel on. And then we're going to charge the mandrel with cerium oxide. The sponge underneath it is going to help keep
keep an even distribution of the cerium oxide on the corian mandrel. Uh, advantage of using a corian mandrel is it's a little softer than most and will help conform to the concave surface. That wraps up the final polish on this little piece of Dust Devil Sunstone. Go ahead and take it out of the quill. And this piece is actually uh, the pavilion of a gemstone that will become the center of the uh, floral design that we did in the piece of Schiller sunstone. We're going to transfer the sunstone and then flat facet the top and then make a nice little gold mounting so that we can anchor it in the center of this floral motif design. Uh, both of these pieces are nice dust devil sunstone. We'll mount it in a nice little gold mounting, put some little gold wires next to it and set a tiny little diamond in the end of those gold wires and that'll give us the impression that that's the center parts of this little sunstone flower that we've created. It's like winning a race you change hats and you put on the Dust Devil uh, cap to uh, promote the Dust Devil Mining Company. Uh, when you're actually able to go down into the pit and you see just how difficult it is to dig the sunstone to begin with uh, it gives you an appreciation for the value of the sunstone, gives you an appreciation for how much hard work uh, all of the dust devils put into mining the sunstone. You certainly can't beat the uh, hospitality and uh, camaraderie that happens within the dust devil community.